I pour the milk before the cereal. This is in the scope of my expertise. And I'd like you to say, I'd like you to admit to yourself that you are a psychopath. Guten Tag, my brothers. Well, guess what? Today, this week, last week, this weekend, I put a little thingy on my Instagram. I said, give me your juiciest confessions. Surprisingly, y'all were open as frick about it. Y'all were candid as hell about it. I got some confessions that were quite juicy. Some of them were a little bit sad. Some of them were happy. Some of them were funny. Some of them were wild. And today, guess what? We're gonna show you all of them and I'd like to react to them. Now remember, a lot of these things go outside of my scope of my exper expertise, right? So I'm all about teaching social skills, teaching about relationship skills, confidence, happiness. Some of this is more into the therapist thing. So I'm not really going to be addressing them in terms of giving you advice aside from maybe some general advice. Um, I will when I can, but for the most part, let's just have a little fun, shall we? I have a crush on your content. Well, thank you very much. I'm in love with Grace and Dolan. That's totally fine. I mean, I'm in love with Timothy Chalamet. There's no big deal about that, right? I'm a Christian, so it's been instilled that I'm only supposed to like guys. But now, I'm starting to see some girls. And that is completely fine and okay. So big ups to you. I like that you are acknowledging that in yourself because I think it's very difficult for people that have been taught to not be attracted to what they are not supposed to be attracted to um, and, and truly acknowledge that in themselves instead of like bottling it down, pushing it down, pushing it away and feeling that frustration for many years. So really good on you for doing the opposite of that and really acknowledging what you're attracted to, who you're attracted to. I slept until 4 p.m. today. Not a big deal, everybody. Guess what? School's out, quarantine's in, work's out, quarantine's in. You're allowed to be a little bit lazy in this wild, weird time. I think I don't like my mom and dad or even love them. Okay, now I am just going to assume that this person that said this is a teenager, somebody in high school, somebody in middle school. This tends to happen around this time in your life for different reasons. Now they could be very strict to you. They could have different views than you, um, but there is not a time in somebody's life where they dislike their parents as much as in their teens. So uh, if you don't love them, if you don't like them, this could change. And I just want you to acknowledge that. Now, I don't know anything about this situation. They could be really, truly toxic people in your life. But in general, for the most part, it's normal to not really like your parents at this time in your life. You're in love with my girl. Alrighty then. Thank you very much for that news. Before watching your videos, I didn't know what being yourself meant. And that's okay, because guess what? I didn't know what being yourself meant. And I spent a lot of my early years figuring that out. Because a lot of people say, oh, just be yourself if you're gonna go talk to somebody. Oh, you like that girl? What do you do? Just be yourself to them. And say, I don't know what being myself is. I've acted like Jim Carrey all of my freaking life. And now I don't know how to come out of that. So learning to find who I was, finding what really aligns with who I am, finding what my true expression is, that took a long time. Um, and that is really a lot of what this channel is about and what I try to do. Uh, because before you could really truly find people that you like and that you connect with, you really gotta know who you are and know how to express that and know how to package that well. And so it's okay to really not know what being yourself means. And hopefully, as you watch more and more, you're gonna learn to bring out that real side of yourself to the world and to yourself. I don't like my dad and I think my mom is slowly noticing it. Again, 
if you are in high school, if you are in middle school, this is a natural thing, especially if you are a male, if you're a boy, if you're a dude, it's easy for the dad and the son to find kind of this like, I don't know, battle between each other. And it's merely because at this time in your life, you are a boy turning into a man. So there tends to be these two strong figures with lots of testosterone <laughs> and lots of strong opinions butting heads with each other. And, you know, there have been times in my life where when I lived with my family, I was butting heads with my parents and butting heads with my dad a lot too. But here's the funny thing. The second I moved out and went to live on my own, guess what happened? Our relationship turned amazing, beautiful, great. I just think there is this thing where when a child turns into an adult, they need to be on their own. And it's up to you to decide when that should happen. But to have a really good relationship with your parents, I actually do think that moving out is a really great step to actually come closer together sometimes. I find your look of concentration when reading people or couples both so intense and endearing. Yeah, a lot of people talk about that and I don't think about it, but <laughs> it's just the fact that I'm so, so focused in the moment of trying to watch every little movement, every little emotion, every little interaction between two people that my, my eyes look like I'm like about to strangle somebody, <laughs> but I'm not. That's just my concentration phase. Come on guys, don't make fun of it. Wine glasses arouse me. Now I know that this isn't a joke because that person also DM'd me afterwards and said, hey, please help me on this. I can't help you on this. I am not a therapist, I'm not a psychologist, so I have no idea of what's going on here. The closest thing I remember that is related to this is when there was like, there's like, I don't know, on TLC or some documentary of people that are like attracted to balloons and they like rubbing them. And then there's some that are like attracted to when they pop. And then there's some that are not attracted to when they pop at all. And then there's that guy that's attracted to his car. He's in a relationship with his car. Now, I don't know anything about this stuff psychologically. It's not in my wheelhouse. It's not what I've studied. So I really don't have anything to comment on it, but doesn't sound like a bad thing. Why is it a bad thing? Sounds okay to me, right? Do they arouse you when there's wine in them? Do they arouse you when there's not wine in them? What about the size? You know, those big ass glasses, the ones that are like super big. I could see it actually. Wait, now they have, the, they have that, um, that hourglass figure. Now that, actually, I don't know. Now that I think about it, they're not that, not that bad to look at. Despite the sign of the times, the hopeless romantic in me still hopes to find her soulmate. Oh, well, what's, what's the sign of the times? I mean, is it the fact that it's like quarantine and it's hard to meet people? I mean, this is gonna go away. This is not something that's gonna stay forever. We're not all going to be quarantined forever. I mean, I'd say the longest is probably like a year from now is gonna be the longest we're gonna be quarantined, but I'm just guessing. So listen, you will find your soulmate. Why? Well, because first of all, you're at the right channel. This is what it's all about, finding the right relationships. But two, because you have that sense of purpose in you, that drive in you to do so, that automatically says, yes, you will. It's the people that doubt it. It's the people that have that little bit of doubt in their mind. Those are the people that have less of a chance of doing so. But somebody that is so sure of it, somebody that says, I want to despite everything that's going on, those are the type of people that really find the relationships that they want. I hate humans, they disgust me. I would rather be an animal. Well, I have some good friends of mine that in their lives have felt that way too. I think it's so important to look at the good in people. 
whenever you can. And for me, uh, I'm really fortunate that I'm a natural optimist, so I see the positives in everything as much as possible. Even though I get negative a lot, I'm always, my brain is always going, yeah, but in the end, they're just like, you know, like, yeah, but in the end, they're, they're just like a little child on the inside that just wants their mama or something like that. I'm always bringing it back to finding some sort of sympathy for people. And that's how I always keep my strong love for people, even though sometimes I may get mad at people, I may get angry, I may get down on the world, but I'm always going back and really seeing that human on the inside. And I, I've taught myself to separate somebody's ego with their true self. And I know that the ego can sometimes really envelop somebody, could really take over a person um, if they're not careful. And it can get addictive to really soak in that ego and let it satiate you whenever you can. And that's when people could really turn ugly sometimes. But again, I am always looking at the human behind the ego. And when you do that, it really does enable you to even find that you can love somebody that seems very ugly at that moment. This is something that I could talk about for a really long time, but this is supposed to be a fun video. Let's move on. I'm afraid I won't find love. Now this is one of the biggest issues that people come to me with. Um, they come to me because they are scared. They are not going to end up with somebody for the, you know, for the rest of their lives. They'll be on their deathbed and say, I never found love. I could tell you that this is the worst headspace to be in. When you become afraid that you won't find love, that means that your happiness is reliant on it. Actually, there's this funny, weird kind of paradox where the more you believe that you will find love, the less you are actually relying on love for your happiness. It's very weird. The more you are sure that it's going to happen, the less anxious you get about it. And I talk a lot about this in my audiobook. It's free, it's called Iconic, and you can get it down in my description. I talk in detail about something called purpose. And um, I think this could help you a lot in this fear of never finding somebody. I won't go too deep on it here because again, we're having fun, trying to keep it, trying to keep it playful here, all right? So let's move on. You're one of my favorite person in the world. Ah, well, thank you so much. It feels really good to hear that. Um, I have never had been in the public eye before. So the fact that I'm now on YouTube and this is all happening very quickly, in just several months, I'm like building a channel with people that are watching me and it feels very interesting. I'm so used to having, when I meet people, to have, see them face to face and connect with them. But to know that there's people all around the world that are watching my videos and really enjoying them, it makes me feel really good. But at the same time, I get a little uncomfortable because I'm just like, wow, I'm like not used to all of this. It's, it's very new to me and I'm still exploring it and just the feeling that I get from um, having people that are messaging me a lot every day and saying, oh, I love your video so much, you're so amazing. And just being like, Oof, this, is, this is a lot, this is new to me. I'm not used to this, but thank you so, so, so much. I'm really learning how to like accept these type of things into my life. So thank you. I have a big crush on you. Ah, okay. I'm about to give up on guys on my country, in my country, or just move to Switzerland. Well, I don't know what country you're in and why is Switzerland the choice that you want to move to? Like is, is Switzerland, a, is just, is that a random country or is there a certain type of woman or guy in Switzerland that you know, cause maybe you saw in a movie or a friend or you visited there once, but trust me, don't give up on guys. All guys aren't bad. And I have found that it's not about the gender. It is about how you are finding certain people. So it's not about guys that you're meeting. It is about which guys you're meeting. It's about how you find the right guys. So stick with me. 
I'm gonna keep talking to everybody about how to meet the right people. And I promise you, you'll be able to do it. Does getting a BJ count as losing your virginity? No, it does not. Uh, unless you want it to, but in the general kind of sense, no. Losing your virginity is about the pee-pee going the pee-pee or the pee-pee going in the other thing or the, in fact, you know what? Yes, it does. It does count as losing your virginity. Um, I found that the more I learn about different cultures and um, sexual orientations, the more I find what losing your virginity really means. Um, so actually, I'm going to change my answer and I'm going to say, I don't know, it's up to you. I'm 23 and I've never been in a serious relationship and I'm not sure if I even wanna have one. That's fine, you're 23, I'm 36. When I was 23, I wasn't even thinking about a serious relationship. Yeah, I wasn't in a serious, I, I got into a serious relationship a year later at 24, but I was never looking for it. Dude, don't worry about it. Or lady. Yeah, there's a lady right there in that, yep, yeah, right there in that uh, little emoji. Don't worry about getting into a serious relationship. I don't think it's a big thing. In fact, I'm just opening up a whole can of ideas here. I believe, and I've been thinking about this a lot lately. I believe you are most ready for a serious relationship when you're not looking for one. And yeah, I guess that kind of saying that people say, oh, you're gonna find love when you least expect it. It does make sense in that sense. If you are looking for it, basically what's happening, and I'll break it down for you, you are attaching your happiness too much to it, which gives you anxiety and makes you try to act differently around people that you're interested in, uh, which worsens your chances for a connection authentically um, in every sense, and basically makes you less attractive because you're acting, you're being different, and you're being anxious around people that you're interested in. When you say, I don't care if I get into a relationship or not, I just like meeting great people and I like being happy. Those are the two most important things to me. Now, whether it turns into a serious relationship, that's secondary. I want you to not focus on that. Don't care about that. If you meet the right person, it will come. Again, I'm not the type of person that just says, live your life and the right thing will happen. I have strategy in everything that I do, but after we set up all that strategy, you just leave it to the gods, baby. I've never been in a relationship because I'm too friendly. I don't think that is the reason. In fact, it's not the reason. It's not the reason you're not in a relationship. Being friendly is the number one thing to be. Uh, so there's likely other reasons why you're not in a relationship. I would say the first one is the thing that I always come to. You don't know how to find the person that is right for you. You're not looking in the right places. You could be acting inauthentically around people that you are interested in, which is going to make them feel a kind of weird disalignment, in alignment, unalignment between you and them. And also you acting differently is gonna create anxiety uh, because you are not focusing on your own happiness, but instead you're focusing on how you could possibly get them to make you happy. Um, it's all out of whack. Again, go into my description to get my free audiobook, Iconic. It'll teach you a lot about this stuff. But again, it's not about being too friendly. I want you to be as friendly as possible. I'm so introverted that I wait for my roommates to leave the kitchen to grab a snack. Guess what? I used to do that too. I am a super duper polarized personality. I am very extroverted sometimes and I'm extremely introverted sometimes. Um, and yes, there's times where like I feel so, especially when I'm at home. When I'm at home, that is like my sacred me time. I don't wanna be engaging with others. I wanna be like, 
recharging my battery. I want to be to myself thinking in my thoughts. If I want to walk around with my undies on, I'll do it, gosh darn it. So there's been many times when I had roommates that I would literally wait for them to leave before I entered the room, just so I wouldn't have to go, hey, what's up, man? How you doing? <laughs> I just, I, don't, I didn't want to do that. Because again, when I was in my introverted little shell, I didn't want to come out even for a second. But when I leave my apartment is usually when I turn that on and say, listen, it's my time to actually engage with people. So listen, I completely understand. My nan used to read Fifty Shades of Grey to me before bed when I was naughty. Nan confession. <laughs> what kind of nan is that, man? Holy gosh. I personally have never read the book, but if she doesn't have a great, amazing sense of humor, then she is not so. <laughs> Nan, I want to talk to your Nan and see what was going on in her head. Um, unless she has, even if she does have an incredible sense of humor. I've never read the book. I don't know how in detail and graphic it gets. And I wonder how old you were when she did read this. But um, I don't think you fix naughty with naughty. I don't know how to be myself around my friends. Now, this is also a super duper common thing. I don't want you to think that you're the only person. Something that I learned um, through going out to like bars and meeting people for years and years and years and meeting thousands and thousands of people is I realized I wasn't alone. What does that mean? I realized that I wasn't alone in my fears, my anxieties about meeting people, being with people, making friends, dating. I realized that basically everyone feel has similar fears, feelings that I do. And guess what? Even the people that you go, nah, that person never, oh, no, that person has never felt what I felt. Yeah, it's likely that they have, and they might even do it more than you. Some people are just a lot better at holding up a facade than you are. Um, to me, that actually means that you are being more yourself than the people that have the stronger facade. Now, I'm not saying that you don't have a really strong facade. I'm saying that some people that feel so anxious all the time and they can't hide it, that's more you than just completely acting confident all the time. How to actually become yourself? Mm. What I would say, the easiest piece of advice I could give you is start looking for somebody that you feel so incredibly comfortable around. You might even have somebody in your life like that, and I know most people do. And I want you to spend even more time with them. And if you haven't met that person yet, find that person and spend as much time as you can with that person. It teaches you what your real self is. And actually, that's how I was able to get over my facade. I always used to say, I'm 99% myself, 1% not myself around women, and I know that they notice it. And how did I get over that last percent? Is I started making best friends with girls, with women. Um, and doing that, I was able to bring my real self out around beautiful women because I was befriending them without trying to actually hook up with them, date them, whatever, get in a relationship with them. And my real self was able to come out and I said, oh, that's what it feels like to be around a really attractive woman. So then when I went around attractive women, it was so much more easy for me to access that. So what I want you to do is I want you to find somebody where you feel exactly yourself. So when you go around other people, you know exactly how to access that real side of you. Romantic affection makes me uncomfortable and I'm afraid because of childhood PTSD. Now this is an area that I cannot speak on. I'm sorry. Um, this is some place where I think a therapist 
is going to be amazing and really the best solution. But the one thing that I can say to you is if you truly want to feel good with romantic affection around somebody in your life, this is not something that just is not possible. This is completely possible for you. It just takes a lot of rehabilitation and I'm really wishing the best for you in this and I'm praying for you. I pour the milk before the cereal. This is in the scope of my expertise and I'd like you to say, I'd like you to admit to yourself that you are a psychopath. When I was about 11 years old, I lost my virginity to my best friend, both girls. Okay. Well, I do know that this actually happens often, and this is not something that's so unusual. And I think that's why these anonymous confessions are really valuable because it enables people to see there's probably somebody out there that has had this exact experience or a similar experience before. And they said, well, I'm weird because of this. I am scared to you know, be myself because this has happened to me. When you realize that this is quite common, this happens a lot to people. And not to say that this was a traumatic experience because it may have not been a traumatic experience, but I just don't want anybody to feel weird about these things. Do you think marriage is for everybody? No, I don't. Marriage is a human construct. It's something that we made and we made it, I'm pretty sure, specifically around the agri agricultural revolution when people started realizing that, wait a second, I could just like have a farm and grow a bunch of stuff and sell it to people and then I could make money or I could trade my farm stuff with other people like corn and get things in return. And then they said, well, wait a second, like, you know, I want some company, so how about just having one person because I'm living miles and miles from anybody else? And wait a second, how about having some free workers so I could have kids and have them work on the farm? Oh, this works. And that's when I think, I mean, tell me if I'm wrong. I'm not a history buff, but I think that is when uh, the idea of what we know today as a family was kind of really started. But that's not even what we're talking about. We're talking about the specific Thing known as marriage. I know that there's benefits to marriage because of like tax stuff, but I'm not smart enough to know about that. I know that marriage is specifically here really because of religion, right? People don't need to get married in order to be soulmates, in order to be twin flames, in order to be lifelong, exclusive, committed partners with each other. It's just you don't need to have the certificate. You don't need to have a white dress and a tux and walking down the aisle. It's just not necessary. And I think Gen Xers, Gen Zers, Gen Zoomers, and millennials such as myself are starting to realize that all of the kind of traditions that our parents and our great grandparents and everything uh, had, we're starting to like break those apart, pick those apart and go, you know, there's some things we really don't need. There's some stuff that we really like. There's some stuff we don't like. And guess what? We could throw that out if we want to. Um, and I think marriage is starting to be one of those things on the list that millennials and Zoomers are starting to look at and go, well, why? Why do I have to get married so quick? If I wanna get married, why can't it be when I'm 50? What's the use of marriage? What is the reason for it? Marriage is a really beautiful thing. It is when two people have said, listen, I want to commit the rest of my life to just you and only you. And that's beautiful. Um, but for many people, that's not something that they want to do. And I respect that. That's fine. The answer to your question is no, marriage is not for everybody. I still kind of miss my first girlfriend. It's been two years. Uh, now, listen. I know how it feels to miss somebody too, but I'm telling you, if you just focus on finding the right people, you are going to find somebody that's amazing. And when you do, 
you're gonna forget that person from the past. I promise you. And not in a forget way where it's like, I never think of that person again. You could think of them and look back on that time in your life as, oh, that was really great. And still be even happier now in the moment and happier in the relationship that you're in. My first time having sex, I was high on Xanax, so I barely remember it. Well, I've never been on Xanax, so I don't know how that feels or I wouldn't know how to barely remember something. I don't think there's been a time in my life where I barely, like, I even get confused when people are like, I got blackout drunk, man. I don't even remember last night. That would kind of be cool to me to be like, whoa, I don't even remember what I did. Like I was like a different person. I wake up and I'm in a different alternate Anthony. But uh, regarding your first time losing your virginity, it's not as big a deal as everybody makes it out to be. So I don't want you to worry and go, oh my God, it's supposed to be special. Not to say that you should just you know, have sex with any freaking person that you find, but it doesn't have to be like this big momentous thing. What I think is actually more important is learning to find somebody that you could have really, really great sex with, with somebody that you have a super strong connection with. And sometimes that may not be your first time. And sometimes maybe you don't want to have your first time to be the most amazing time where you are spending it with somebody that you have a strong chemistry with because maybe you wanna be more experienced in having sex before you find that really great person. And the best time should be the second time or third time that you have sex. So who knows? Totally have a crush on a straight boy and he doesn't even know. Well, this brings up the topic of straight, gay, bi, all of those things. I think those terms are important now because it's so important for the LGBT, LBGT, the queer community to really have a voice and really have rights in society. But eventually when that happens, I really would like all of these terms to just go away. I truly think that if we weren't trained from birth to only be attracted to a certain gender, we probably would be a lot more fluid about our attraction to people. And I don't think that's a big problem. I, I think that's a good thing. I think that opens up uh, intimacy between everybody instead of just making these rules in our head. I don't know, I just thought to go on that tangent for this uh, confession. I'm a Christian and I let my first boyfriend pressure me into sleeping with him not even one month into dating. Uh, it sounds like he did it without your consent. Or even if he did get consent from you, you truly weren't feeling it and really not wanting to do it, which feels like he actually did not have your best interest in mind. What I think is important is for you to bring that up to him and let him know how you feel, that you feel like he didn't, wasn't really thinking of you first when it came to having sex. Um, and if he still can't see that, if he still can't understand it, I recommend probably it's best to end the relationship and find other people that actually do have your best interest in mind when it comes to getting intimate. You're so magnetic, I'm dying. Well, thank you. I actually thought this was gonna be a more hoot and holler in time. I didn't know it was gonna be so somber, serious. I was giving out some like serious advice and talking about some serious topics. I thought we were gonna be laughing. I didn't really read these through, <laughs> but I think that's okay. I know that there's a lot more uplifting ones, more playful ones, more light ones, airy ones. If this video gets to 5,000 likes, I'm gonna do a part two. Thank you so much guys for watching. Subscribe, subscribe, subscribe. Join the Discord, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.